All right, it is that time. One day in Vegas <laughs> is fun. Two days is okay. Three days in Vegas, too much, right? It's like it's time to go home. Uh, but uh, appreciate you guys uh, sticking it out and joining us here today. No cocktail hour tonight or anything, right? It's a pretty, it's like it's winding down. Um, but here, we're here today to talk about some identity constructs that hopefully you'll find interesting. Uh, my name is Mike Engel. The company is One Cosmos. I'm one of the co-founders, head of strategy, uh, long background in, in InfoSec and, and uh, uh, cybersecurity and uh, identity. And I'm joined here by Kevin. Say hi, Kevin. Hello, everyone. Uh, Kevin Shanley. I'm an identity principal at uh, Amazon, AWS. And I lead go-to-market for some of our uh, consumer identity solutions, which includes Amazon Cognito and uh, verified permissions. All right. So uh, let's jump in. We only have uh, about 20 minutes, so it'll be short and sweet. We'll show you some stuff in action. Um, we're going to talk about, you know, I'm not going to spend more than 60 seconds talking about the problem that you guys all live with today. Um, but we're going to talk about some standards that are really important, some certifying bodies to let you know that the uh, technology you technologies that you're using are legit and properly tested. Um, we all know about FIDO, we know about identity onboarding, but we're gonna get into the weeds a bit on that. We're gonna get pretty deep into password lists, what we've seen work, what doesn't. Uh, we spent, Kevin and I spent a whole ton of time today just testing some production websites. I'll show you how some of that went. It's not as easy as it looks, as, as many people have learned here. Um, and some recommendations on what we can do to take things away. Um, yeah, this is, one of our partners is a, a management consultancy called Oliver Wyman. They're about 6,000 people. They're owned by Marsh McLennan. And I did a webinar with them just a, a couple weeks ago with about synthetic identity account takeover. And I was really staggered to find out that synthetic identity is a bigger problem than account takeover. All right? People steal credentials. They fish. They do all that. And that is $11.4 billion a year in, in losses. But synthetic identity, not knowing who it is, or uh, is, is an even bigger challenge. And the people in this room aren't impacted by that other than your costs are going up. So this is a real problem uh, with real numbers behind it that we can make a difference on. And some of the technologies that we'll get into here today are just your uh, identity verification. The US is about 15 years behind the rest of the world here. It's time to start embracing digital account onboarding. And we've had a, you know, a lot of great conversations here at the show about that. We'll touch on wallets briefly, but there's been so many wallet discussions here, I've decided to talk a little bit less about that here today. And Kevin's really gonna get into password lists and uh, kind of what he's seen work and what has not. So standards. Um, I've been in InfoSec before the term existed, right? I was doing it in the 90s uh, before the term CISO was coined at Lehman Brothers. And I've really come to appreciate identity. Right? And we're all here as identity geeks in some capacity. Um, and the standards that tie all this stuff together are pretty baked by now, right? In, in 2017, we had NIST 863-3 came out. I hadn't heard of this before 2018, really. And most CISOs do not know what this is. I'm surprised, a lot of my friends that are now CISOs out on the street. Um, but it's really important and it works well. And it's a government standard that says, how do you prove who somebody is remotely? It's in its fourth revision, which is in draft coming out soon. There was a whole session about that yesterday. Uh, so how do you do that? Scan a driver's license, a passport, a state identity document, and verify the data with the issuing authority. Right? AMVA, if you're familiar with that, that's the DMV aggregators, the Association of Motor Vehicle Administrators. So there's real ways to do this. That's so much better than type in these 20 fields and let's hope for the best because that stuff has been stolen so many times over. So. This is a really important standard, and also, of course, we all know and love the, the good news of, of FIDO. It's all over the conference. Um, FIDO is getting there. It's going to take years, but you need to get started with this today. So the 863-3 standard has an A side for uh, authentication and an, uh, an I side for, uh, I'm sorry, an A and a B side, IAL and AAL, and they go uh, together like peanut butter and jelly. Um, when you put these together, it gives you what we refer to as identity-based authentication. Not just a token you gave somebody, but it's based on a real-world identity. And there's certifying bodies that tie all this together. Cantera well, um, is one of the uh, presenters here. They are a nonprofit that certifies vendors against NIST 863-3. FIDO, you want a FIDO certified product. And if you're using real biometrics or you're looking somebody in the face or matching photos, 
you want a biometric certification that's industry uh, accepted like IBEDA. So keep these in mind, make sure your vendors are honest and have these things under their belt. Uh, and this, right, this is, this is still how we do it, sadly. I, I haven't seen a, a, a top 20 bank do this digitally yet. I'm hoping, I'm talking to all of them here at the show, and they're, I know they're all thinking about it, we're gonna get there. But the, the, the way that this can be done, everybody has a phone and a driver's license. Not everybody, right? There's a lot of diversity and equity and inclusion things we need to consider, but let's use them. So um, I took a, uh, this is one of our real world customers here. They happen to be a telco. That's the only thing I'll say about them because I kind of gave it away, but this is an iPhone upgrade experience. And the um, name was blurred out to mask the innocent. So the idea is here, you have to do step up so many different ways, whether you're adding a new payee on Zelle or you're buying a phone, because you may not trust what's going on. Bad guys know how to take advantage of this. So what are your options? Send them a one-time code? No, I mean, it's an option, of course. It's, it's weak, it's interceptable. Um, so instead, we'll ask them to either transmit the credential from their phone, a wallet, right? If you happen to have a good app, you can stick things in it, or just use the web, use that, 14 megapixel camera that's in everybody's hand. And so the idea here is you send them a message to their phone and continue the journey in a browser on the phone. Doesn't need an app. That 14 megapixel camera will kick in, take a picture of the front, take a picture of the back, take a selfie. And you verify this stuff in 60 seconds now with a very high degree of confidence. And it's a better experience for the end user. They don't even have to type anything into the keyboard. When this process is done, you'll basically get all the data back, a green check mark, and says it's good to go. And the reason that this is easy now today is there's companies that you just, it's all SaaS. You don't have to build this stuff in yourself and get APIs and SDKs. Just make a call out to one of these very capable third-party providers, like us, but there's lots of them out there, and they'll take care of the heavy uh, lifting for you and give you back a green check mark and, and take the liability off your, your shoulders for it. So now we're gonna get a bit into authentication and um, you know the, the legacy authentication, again, I'm not gonna describe the water while you're drowning, um, but it's just all about user experience today, right? It's implicit that if you get rid of the password, you're gonna have it be more secure, but it's really about creating a better user experience. So I'll let Kevin uh, drive here a bit and talk some, uh, get in the weeds on passwordless. Great, thanks Mike, okay. So a couple of killer stats up here to kind of kick things off. Um, first up, 100% of respondents recognize that going passwordless you know, had, had value. Um, now, I look at any statistic that says 100% and I'm a little skeptical. Uh, <laughs> so I actually ran my own little internal surveys uh, through Amazon working groups, roundtables and such, and asked this very question. Um, and it was indeed well into the 90 uh, percents. So it's, it's very real. People see the value of passwordless. They want to do this. This is, this is coming. Um, likewise, you know, how many websites can you name that uh, actually have passwordless, where you're using this stuff in production? You know, can you count them on one hand? And so you know, we're, we're sort of in this weird situation of we see the value of it, it's coming, and almost no one has done anything about it. Uh, so it's super interesting. Um, and when we kind of take this a bit forward, uh, Gartner had a similar statistic uh, of, or I should say a prediction of where this stuff was going. And they're looking at, you know, by 2025, more than 50% of workforce uh, and more than 20% of uh, customer authentication would be passwordless. So when I look at this, I see, all right, workforce got the memo. They see the value, they, they can push their employees to do it. But why is this failing for on the customer side? Like what, what is gonna be the big lagger here? And, and this is where we can start to kind of double click on that and look a bit further of, you know, what is passwordless uh, really? How do we start to move this from the customer standpoint? Um, you know, they're not employees, so we can't just force uh, the customer to do things. If we make it painful, they'll leave. Uh, so uh, when we look at actually what is passwordless, uh, it's really anything that's not using that password, that shared secret coming across. So a lot of things actually fall into that category. Um, you know, SMS, email, one-time password, push-based authentication, server-side biometrics, things where, uh, you know, the biometric is actually there, but it, uh, it's stored server-side, so you can go in between devices. Um, 
And of course, WebAuthn with passkeys, using things like Touch ID, Face ID, uh, YubiKeys, and such. Uh, and all these have different types of deployment uh, paradigms. Uh, so when we look across this, and some folks might have uh, some contention of, of where we've put some of these things, and depending on how you measure, measure this stuff, indeed, uh, it, it can be different. So kind of first up, SMS email one-time password. Well, when we look at that, you know, this, this is ubiquitous. It's absolutely everywhere. You know, it passes the mom test. Um, in fact, my mom recently forgot her password and had to go through that flow. So that, that is like, it, it's well accepted, it's well supported, uh, but it's also the most expensive. This has ongoing costs and it has funny different costs when you start going into different countries. Uh, it can have different types of issues, like when you go to countries that don't have reliable SMS service, and they have to wait 15 minutes to be able to log in. You know, great customer experience, awesome. <laughs> um, and so likewise, you know, so then you start to look at things like more of these device-based uh, models, one-time password, push-based, uh, which have really gained a lot of traction in corporate security. I think a lot of us here probably log into Microsoft Authenticator, Google Authenticator, Okta Authenticator, you know, some variation of that. Um, and that's great. Uh, it, it's also not the greatest user experience. Uh, I really disliked having to pull the phone out of my pocket every time and unlock it and go through that thing. And if you're, you know, administrator, you have privileged access, you're doing this many, many times a day. Um, it's just not great experience. Um, you know, likewise, as we start to move on towards the end, what is, you know, what everyone's kind of looking at as a future, WebAuthn uh, with pass keys, uh, you know, this is sort of the untested waters. Uh, you know, we've kind of come through this from day three of the conference. We've been seeing passwordless demos all day long, every day. Uh, and so, you know, you start to get some comfort with it, the flow of it, the registration, uh, but we are in the, the small minority of, of folks. Uh, with all this, and it requires hardware support. Um, so there are like 10 computers in my house. I think two of them would support passwordless. You know, anytime you're having a desktop or something, it's not supported. Older laptops, anything without a TPM chip, anything with like out-of-date OSs. Uh, so it just becomes kind of you know a, a painful perspective to to actually go through and, and have this stuff. Um, and there, there's a couple of attributes on the end: increased login time and free. Uh, free is what we're all after. We want it to be the most secure solution. We want it to actually you know, uh, not cost anything. We want everyone to adopt it. Uh, and the increased login time over passwords, I think a lot of folks will have contention with. We actually went uh, back and forth a couple times on this. But uh, what we came back on was you know, when we were doing a demo and was watching uh, other non-techie folks, they were all using form fillers. It was, their password was already getting auto-completed. It was already getting put in there. So actually, their password experience, it wasn't that bad. You know, it's, it can be ridiculously, qu ridiculously quick. And likewise, uh, when I was first introduced to WebAuthn back in like 2016, 2017, uh, it came out as, hey, this is a, a phishing-resistant solution. That was what it was all about. It was about phishing and, and combating that. It's like, well, with... You know, we essentially all have password phishing uh, solutions today. It's LastPass, it's 1Password, it's any password manager that auto form fills when it recognizes the domain in the URL. So that essentially, you know, what is it really solving in, in that case? You know, what are we doing here? And it is adding more security. Um, and it's getting you past these credential-based attacks, uh, which are drastically increasing. Um, we have the statistics and the metrics to back all that up. Um, attackers are going after passwords. And so as a part of this, oh, yeah. <laughs> actually, let me pass this off. I'll, I'll let Mike do this demo. Yeah, so I, um, I'm a member of the FIDO Alliance, and I'm also uh, on the board for uh, Cantera. So I get to really see under the hood of this stuff. This is a FIDO um, demonstration from the FIDO Alliance's website. So nothing special here, but what it is is you put in your existing credential, and what they've done for the demo is go into your profile page and add passwordless. Very simple concept. And the reason I, I really I like this demo is it's the way everybody here who owns a customer or even an employee facing application can do it today. Just put it on the account, say passwordless button, right? And so what happened is it just I just bound this, you know, it could either be passkey or just this local machine. 
I think I made this, uh, this screenshot before um, pass keys were out, this is like a year ago, and it's ready. When I come back to the screen a second time, this should be the user experience. Sign in, Windows Hello pops up, and you're staring at the application. All right, so that's kind of what we're all trying to get to. And um, we, that method of deployment is what we refer to as coexistence. You're sticking it in there alongside the existing way so you don't break anything, get your feet wet, have all your techie, geeky users, but not your mom. She wouldn't know to go look there, right? <laughs> Unless you showed her. But then the second time, she'd be fine. Hey, my mom's a smart cookie. Yeah, so, yeah, you know. so <laughs> that'd be good. Um, so um, what we did, we were geeking out today before just trying to come up with some examples. And he was on Kayak's website. Kayak is another FIDO Alliance member. And they had on their uh, you know, mic go here and, and at the bottom here, you see this set up pass key. You guys can all try this. This is on Kayak's website. You all use Kayak, right? Or if this doesn't work, maybe you'll go use Expedia. We'll get to that. So you press this button and up pops. This is what I just recorded this this morning, my Windows Hello. And again, similar process. I go back in the same browser, right? And that's a big, that's the devil in the details. And I just log in the same way. No magic link to go fetch or whatever. But I tried Edge on the same computer. It wouldn't let me in. I tried using my phone and enrolling by setting up a second pass key. It didn't work. So kudos to them for getting it out there. Like Reed Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn says, if you're not embarrassed by your first release, you waited too long, right? Because you're not learning. So it's there and it's sort of working. And um, I'm going to let Kevin take over. And he was trying about 12 different things on his computer where um, just, you know, again, devil in details, things you need to think through as you try to roll this stuff out. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. So thought it would be interesting. And, you know, we've seen a lot of demos on pass keys and the magic of it, right? And it just kind of magically works every time. And uh, I actually tried a bunch of these demos um, uh, after they ran, and I ran into a lot of problems. And I thought, well, actually, wouldn't it be interesting to see the other side of it? Uh, if we're the techies in the audience and we need to help our family members support uh, things and actually uh, help them get things working, would you like to see when it doesn't work and what, the, what things you can kind of expect in the future? And so uh, the setup to this, uh, this was a demo that actually ran on Tuesday. Um, and it's you know custom coded demo uh, where, where you can go in, register a pass key, uh, try and sync things, and, and set it up to actually have a uh, simple login. And so I used, I set up a pass key on my iPhone, which is late generation iPhone 13 with all the updates. Uh, I was using my computer, oops, which is a, uh, a totally up to date uh, corporate uh, AWS laptop. Um, I have admin rights on that laptop. I have the possibility to do face ID, touch ID, and I have Yubi keys. So I have a lot of different ways I can test this out. And let's see what happened. So once I had all that set up, now I'm gonna go in and try and actually just do that passwordless sign-in. So I'd set this up on my iPhone, and I open up Firefox, it's my favorite browser, and I try things out. And so it doesn't actually detect that I have a fingerprint capability or a face capability, and so I put in a, my work YubiKey, and I get key can't be used. Choose a different one. And it was a FIPS YubiKey. So now I try a different one. Uh, because I'm a techie and I have a lot of these things. Now this, this other YubiKey has a pin. And I get a different error message. This key doesn't look familiar. Well, darn. <laughs> Why didn't I see that demo before? Uh, you know, we suggested password list to everyone. And so likewise, um, then I opened up Chrome and I tried the same thing. And there was already something different. This was actually showing me, hey, you can log in with your phone. Still didn't show face or, um, or touch uh, uh, login. Uh, but once again, the security keys didn't work. And for me, I started thinking like, okay, maybe there's actually something wrong. So then with Mike, we went over to One Cosmos website and I was able to log in with my YubiKey. And so it was just like, okay, the implementation matters. There can be stuff on the server side that, that uh, is you know, problematic. And finally, I tried logging in with the phone, and it worked. Thank you. <laughs> but there was actually, this was not without some problems as well. Um, so as I was going through testing this, one time I logged in with my phone, and it didn't work. And I realized that the Bluetooth on my computer had gone to sleep. And in the time of trying to take the picture and send it across, there was no connection. So now things time out, it doesn't work. 
I did refresh everything and it worked again, but you know, you're not seeing those demos of these are things that go wrong. And depending on you know, what level Bluetooth drivers you have, what, what touch or face ID drivers, if your laptop has been locked down by corporate security, if they've locked off parts of Windows Hello, um, you know, these things matter and it, it can all break, even with all the up-to-date right hardware that can be there. So then in the course of kind of troubleshooting and looking at this stuff, I stumbled across this on the Google developer website and realized none of this would have ever worked. I set up a pass key on my iPhone and we see over there, this is a Windows laptop. It doesn't support pass key sync at all. And there's no plans for support within the Windows OS. Well, darn, you know, <laughs> that's, that's kind of a problem. What are we doing here when Mac is a very small percentage of the actual total deployments and Windows, you know, none of this really works without sync. I, I know we like to say that uh, non-exportable credentials are gonna be much more secure, but I wanna be able to log into my bank account, whether it's my laptop, my phone, uh, you know, my desktop, anything. I, I wanna have that access on different devices. And I think most consumers would agree that you wanna have that stuff. That's not to say that, you know, it doesn't work and it's not coming. And in fact, if we were to look at this very same graph just a few months ago, you'd see a lot more red. And just even a few months before that, you'd see even more red. This is changing and this support is changing in real time. And Chrome actually does have support uh, or they are planning and working on support for Windows on Chrome. Um, but once again, it's like you change to Firefox, you change to, to a different OS, support's gonna vary. You're gonna have different types of experiences. And on that note, um, we have issues in Mac as well. Chrome on Mac OS stores pass keys in a local profile and doesn't sync them to other devices. As of May, 2023, that's on the developer side. And so, yeah, they're, they're, you're gonna run into all sorts of issues. It's a fast evolving, fast moving space. Um, it's not to say we shouldn't be using it. We absolutely should, and we should start using it today and start implementing this stuff. But these are the important things to kind of think about as you roll this out to more people, more ecosystems, um, where, where you're just gonna be exposed to a lot more variables. So a couple of passwordless recommendations. Um, first and foremost, we should get started, right? Kayak is an awesome example, right? Um, because actually, and we didn't show this in our demos, when you go to log in, it's a login with a magic link. So you have the option to opt in to like a web auth in, a passkey based uh, environment, but you don't have to. And so essentially they don't have passwords anymore. If they were breached, they're not gonna breach your passwords at all. Like that's amazing. They've actually moved security forward. And if it's a website that you, you know, don't use every day, that's oftentimes actually a better experience. So my wife will actually, she, I put a password manager in her computer, set it all up, and you know, sometimes it doesn't fill in or whatever, she resets her password. And when she resets it, she doesn't actually update LastPass or, or whatever the password manager is. And so she ends up, every time she logs in, she just resets it. That, that's her workflow. And I think a lot of people do, the, do things like this. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Um, and, and especially when I hadn't set it all up, but that's the reality. Right, and so you know, if if users aren't going to remember their passwords anyway, if we have a simple workflow that works, then yeah, run with it. Um, and so likewise, you know, pick and choose from all these different passwordless te technologies. Uh, there's a lot of stuff we can do in this ecosystem, and it's definitely not a one size fits all. Uh, we learned from kind of the, the UX talk a, a few days ago was give options, but also on the kayak example, and this was an interesting one. Mike and I both went to that website and we both set up similar accounts. He saw an option for pass keys and I didn't. So they were actually doing some smart JavaScript to realize that corporate security had locked down some of my components around Windows Hello and it wasn't gonna work. It was brilliant because it would have been a bad experience for me. I wouldn't have been able to go in. Um, likewise, we need to allocate time for user training. Um, depending on how, how often folks are actually logging to your site, uh, this can be a really big thing. Um, imagine users only come to your site every once in a few months. You know, kayak, you're not, you're not doing travel every single day. It's not something you're coming to regularly. Um, if you 
if you have someone set up a one-time password, or sorry, not a one-time, but a, uh, a passwordless authentication, well, it could be next time they come back three months later, they don't actually know or they've forgotten that they did that, right? So they, they're not sure how to, to log in. Um, and so you need to think about some of these flows and how that will work in to actually have a nice, consistent move to the future. And you start deprecating these methods over time, and we don't want to measure success as 100%. You know, we, we, we want to make sure that kind of as we go along on this journey together, we're just consistently getting better and better and better. Okay, Mike? I'll just... Um... Just one quick t comment, you know, the definition of a digital wallet is, uh, is really fuzzy. It's, their standards are not baked yet. My definition of a wallet is a safe place to keep something. If you have an app for your customers, if you're a telco, a bank, you definitely have an app that they use and use that to keep credentials. And that is your trusted authenticator. It is, it is ironclad, it works every time. I use the bank in the US that sends me a push message, tap it and authenticate. I don't use the one that makes me do a password and an OTP. That is the, that's the reason I picked my bank. So we're going to see verifiable credentials and decentralized identity and wallets standardized over the next couple of years. But if you have this, um, you know, there's a bunch of wallet enabling technologies, scan a credential. I talked about this and then link it to an, a strong authenticator and add some real biometrics to it. So this is how it all will be tying together over the, uh, the coming years. And you also see uh, verifiable credentials. A lot of the big tech players are on board with this. It is the future of identity. It's one of the wallet standards that's evolving alongside of MDLs. So um, with that, I'm gonna thank everybody for coming on this uh, wrapping it up kind of day. And um, if you have any questions or if you want a copy of this deck, um, just reach out to me on LinkedIn or you know, you'll, you'll, you can find us. I don't know, they might be posting them online as well on the Identiverse site. Any questions? Miller time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <Woo! laughs>